Okay, we got all the uh, parts made. So far, it's looking pretty good. I'm happy the way it's turning out. So we're down to just the welding. Um, we'll take a closer look at these tomorrow before we weld anything up. Um, tired, it's late. I'm sure it's five o'clock somewhere. <laughs> so uh, we're gonna pick this up tomorrow. All right, we'll see you guys then. Okay, so we're gonna get set up to weld these. Okay guys, so we're getting ready to weld. Here's our setup. So, I've, we've, we're clamped down. I've got a, uh, a piece of half inch plate. I don't know how well you can see this underneath. I got our draw blocks are bolted together. And what I did is I, is I put a 15 thousandths feeler gauge in here. So our plates are spaced 15 thousandths. Okay, and our blocks are drawn up all the way. Not real tight, I just uh, basically just snug, finger tight on the, on the uh, draw bolts. Okay, so I'm just an occasional welder, so I, I did, a, did a few test welds. And... Uh, almost embarrassed to show this but anyways these two are 6013 and I like the way that was running that actually um, seemed to work the best and then on the other side here the this one is also 6013 and this one over here is 7018 I didn't like how much heat I, w I had to put in with the 7018 because uh, I'm really worried that we're going to get some warpage. And these, these other ones were um, 7018 also. I was trying some different settings. And, and I think that rod is pretty old. So we're going to go with 6013. Uh, I'm not sure if I can film the welding or not. I'll, I'll see if I can set up something here. Um, I, I don't have any... Um, uh, filters for the lens so I'm not sure what you're gonna see um, I don't know if it's worth setting up you know what I'm, I'm not gonna I'll just bring it back after we're done so what I'm gonna do is just um, we're gonna tack a little bit on each side probably maybe run a half a bead on this side and then come back around run a half a bead on this side on each block and then alternate just to just to keep the heat from building up and and uh, to try to keep the, uh, the the weld pulling forces equal as we go. All right, well, <laughs> I guess uh, enough talking. Let's uh, let's go for it. Okay, we got our first series of tacks in here. These on the outside, uh, these didn't come out too bad. Uh, the ones on the inside, these were tough to get to, and and. <laughs> Ended up long arcing like that one there. Ended up long arcing because I, I was running out of rod and couldn't get any any closer. And these two over here, they're okay. So let me. Uh, I've got to come back and uh, and tack the other side now. Finish these off. Now that's cooled down a little bit, and uh, we'll be back. I'm sure someone's going to ask, what kind of machine are you using? So, all I have is just one of these old Lincoln Tombstone. Um, this is the ACDC. If you're looking for one of these, um, look for this style that has the two knobs or two switches. Um, it'll do both AC and DC. Um, these are great home shop machines you can pick them up i got this one on craigslist i think it was 150 bucks um which is pretty good price usually they run around 300 but a lot of times you'll see them with just the single knob and they price them like it was the acdc so you got to be careful what you're what you're uh, looking for so anyways um we got our second pass in here let me clean this up and i'll bring you guys in had to clean this up a little bit um, so ended up doing a, a cap 
past with the 7018. Not the prettiest, but it'll be good enough for what we're doing. Um, it was uh, it was a little tricky trying to get in there with all the clamps, and uh, ended up with a little bit of porosity. I had to do some grinding and then come back and, and cap it. It's a little cold in a couple spots, but I don't think it's going to go anywhere. So. So anyways, we got our bearing. Went ahead and uh, cut the cage off. Rollers are out. Got the um, inner race there ready to go. So let's see uh, if we can clamp this up. We got it in there. We snug down our bolts. Not super tight, just, uh, just a little bit past snug. And here's what the bottom looks like. So we're going to take this out to the press and uh, let's see if it we're works. We're out at the press. So we've got our, our plates there. Here's our new tool. There's the gear. And that fits right in between. Okay. And we've al we already had this. It's our adapter. Okay. Made and run here. Let's line her up a little better here. truth piece of cake man closer. I'm going to go ahead and finish this off camera then we'll show you guys. All right, this gear is junk anyway, so we're just going to let it normally do both hands to catch it. Bonk. <laughs> there we go. Okay, the little dog's going to check it out. <laughs> All right, I think we're going to call that a success. Okay, we're down to the last step. This is the all-important protective coating. I like to use this uh, gun bluing. It, uh, it's much easier than painting. Uh, you don't have to wait for dry time. You do have to get your parts really clean. I uh, <clears throat> wiped, wiped them down with, uh, with brake clean. Kind of put it on, rub it in. Definitely you want to wear gloves with this stuff. I've seen some guys are um, doing simulated uh, color case hardening with this stuff. You know, just kind of putting it on blotchy and, and uh, streaky. We're just going to coat the whole thing here. Takes a few minutes to for the reaction, and all this does it's um, it it causes oxidation, so it's a form of rust. Hey, sorry everyone. I, I thought I had enough battery power left in that other camera to film the bluing process. Not sure where it cut out, but uh, anyways, um, it came out uh, nice. Um, so we um, we wiped everything down with a rag, 
And then we went over it with some REM oil, kind of rubbed the oil in a little bit, polished it with another rag. Um, so I, I love REM oil. That's great stuff for keeping your tools from rusting and, and it doesn't evaporate like the uh, WD-40. And then the, uh, there's your Oxfo Blue. <laughs> you can get that at Brownells or you can find it at most sporting good, you know, any, any place that sells guns usually will have that as well. So anyways, this came out really good. I'm happy with the way it works. I mean, it pulled that bearing off like nothing. And uh, we got to um, we got to try out a few things that we haven't done before. We did a, uh, uh, we bored a tapered hole through this plate. And we got to, uh, we got to do some face plate turning, which I've never done before. And used about <laughs> almost every tool in the shop here just to make this thing. I mean, if you looked at it and you would think, ah, no big deal. I can whip that out in a couple hours. But, uh, of course, filming slows things down. But uh, I probably got like, you know, honest an honest 10 hours into it. Um, but it's, you know, over the course of about five days is what it ended up being. So, all right. Hey, I want to thank everybody for, uh, for following along, stopping by. Um, if you can hit the, uh, hit the thumbs up, like button, subscribe if you can. And once again, thanks a lot. And, uh, we'll see you in the next one. So why not just use a regular bearing splitter? And we have, that's what we've been doing. But the issue is um, it usually only grabs a small percentage of, of that flange, maybe, you know, a quarter of it on each side because of the shape of the bearing splitter. Usually they're kind of egg shaped or um, oval shaped and it's like 50-50, um, you know, sometimes the bearing splitter will pop off or, it'll start, or uh, I have one actually bent the, uh, the jaws on the bearing splitter. So with this design, we're getting full coverage. We've got full contact all the way around that flange on that inner race. And you saw how it worked in the press. It came, it pulled that brace off like nothing. So even pressure, good contact, um, it uh, just makes life so much easier. <laughs> okay.